Welcome La Casa family. Thank you for staying connected. It's me, Connor, and today I'm with Joel Trumpert, who is here to talk about an amazing and important series of courses on uh, financial responsibility and financial relief. It's called Financial Peace University. Joel, what can you tell us about Financial Peace University? Well, this is a program that Dave Ramsey started almost 30 years ago. Uh, I've been leading this class for the last 11 years, eight here at La Casa. Um, it's an excellent program. Uh, it helps you get out of debt, number one. And after you get out of debt, it helps you build wealth for the future. We have a free preview class on Tuesday, January 10th, 645. And the class will start the following Tuesday, January 17th. And it will run for nine weeks. Well, Joel, that's really wonderful that we have a resource like this available to our congregation. Uh, sometimes we go through financial hardships, but there is always a way to seek help and get help for that sort of thing. So if they have any other questions, maybe they, we can just give you a call. Right. You can just give me a call, Joel Trumper. Uh, the church has my cell phone number. Um, it's an old Chicago number, but uh, feel free to give me a call and I'll answer your questions. Well, Joel, thank you so much for being here and telling us more about Financial Peace University um, going into the new year with a strong financial independence. But before we go into the new year, I wanted to quickly look back at last weekend where I went up with our junior high youth ministry on our winter retreat. Let's take a look and see how that went. The 2022 Junior High Winter Retreat was a total blast. You may remember last weekend that it was a little rainy down here in the valley. Well, that rain also made its way up to Northern Arizona and things got a little bit wet, but that didn't stop us from enjoying bubble ball and archery and even paintball. We even got to have s'mores and hot cocoa. We had an amazing time of worship, and discussion, deepening our faith and our understanding of ourselves, each other, and God's grace. Thank you to all of our amazing leaders and volunteers, our drivers, everybody came together and made this trip an unforgettable one. And high schoolers, listen up. The high school winter retreat is just around the corner, so if you haven't signed up for that yet, please go online and do so. This is a trip that you really don't want to miss. Thanks. That was an awesome weekend for our youth, and we want to thank all the volunteers and leaders who made that happen for our young people. Also, I'm here to remind you that when you see this, we'll just be concluding a very successful weekend with Journey Through Bethlehem. We had major crowds and lots of people involved in this, and we want to thank all the volunteers who were involved in that as well, and our staff for making it a very special time for our church. And coming up quickly next weekend is our Christmas cantata. We'll be at all four services here in the sanctuary, and we really hope that you'll invite a friend or neighbor to our special time this year of music and sharing in Christ's birth through all of our musical leaders, choirs, bands, and all who share in that special time. And then we also want to note this, that we have Christmas Eve and Christmas Day worship services. Just a reminder, 4.30 is our children's service. And then our candlelight and carol services are 6, 7.30, and 9 p.m. on Christmas Eve. And of course, our Christmas Day service with Holy Communion at 10 a.m. But you know, this isn't a fun time of season for everyone. For many, this is a difficult season. And we want to honor that by doing something that we began here five years ago, and that is our Blue Christmas. Monday evening, we'll gather here in the sanctuary for any members or friends of La Casa that want to come. And it's a special time as people deal with grief. Whether your loved one passed away this last year or whether it's years or decades ago, it's a time to come. It's not a worship service. It's a reflective and meditative time. You'll have some time to be here in the sanctuary and just uh, some special time that we share together as a family of faith. So when we look at everything come up, we know that Jesus is indeed the reason for the season. And whether this is a difficult season for us or a joyous one, come join us through all of our ministries at La Casa de Cristo. And now, let's worship.
Today, we light the third candle of our Advent wreath. And the third candle is the shepherd's candle because the shepherds were the first to hear the good news of Jesus being born. They went and they told. And we too are called to go and tell. It is my hope and prayer. If you have an experienced journey through Bethlehem, you'll come this afternoon between three and five and share in that experience. But beyond that, just by your daily actions, the way you witness Jesus in your life. Go and tell. The shepherds remind us to go and tell. Let us share God's peace with one another by turning to one another and greeting one another with the peace of the Lord. God's peace be with you. We'll invite you to be seated at this time, and I'm going to have Brenda come up and read this morning's scripture for us. As found on page 688 in the Pew Bible, the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 11. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who has 
was to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind will receive sight, the lame will walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away or count on me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swad swayed by the wind. If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who fear wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messengers ahead of you, who will be prepared your way before you. I tell you the truth, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet he who is at least in the kingdom of heavens is greater than he. From the days of the John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forceful men lay hold of it. The Gospel of the Lord. The worship service had been running its course as it normally did, and everyone kind of knew what was expected. The song had been sung, it was a Christmas carol, and they were waiting for the next part of the service to begin when something caught their attention. It was a man who had entered the worship building and was wandering down the center aisle. He was obviously homeless, he looked disheveled, he had on a dirty coat and a dirty hat, and he made his way to the front of the sanctuary. And everyone began to react in a variety of ways that was assembled that day in that place. Some of them simply watched the man and wanted to see what was going to happen. Others began to be alarmed at what was going to take place, and they reached for their cell phones, believing that they needed to call the police or perhaps be ready for something odd to happen, some sort of disruption in worship, while still others moved to the back of the building, and they began to alert the ushers that maybe there would be some sort of problem. But as this apparently homeless man wandered to the front of the worship center, he got up there, and then they began to see that Something looked familiar about this man. And the pastor that day took off his dirty coat and took off his false beard and his hat because he wanted to teach the congregation a lesson that day about judging by appearances. Yes, it was the pastor who was the homeless man who had wandered into the sanctuary, and he wanted to see how the congregation would react to what their normal expectations were in terms of being disrupted. Whom do we expect this Advent season? That's really what the gospel that Brenda just read for us is all about. Because what had happened is John the Baptist had been preparing for one thing, and he had one idea of who the Messiah would be. But now John's sitting in a two-by-four prison cell, courtesy of King Herod. And something is just not lining up right with John in terms of what he's hearing about his cousin, Jesus. The expectations are completely different. Whereas John came from a strict Nazarite sect that didn't drink alcohol, Jesus is turning water into wine at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Whereas John thinks Jesus should be practicing military strategies and training his disciples for military maneuvers to start guerrilla warfare against Rome, Jesus is healing the sick, and he is performing miracles and hanging out with beggars and with blind people. And John is hearing all these things, and it doesn't match what he is thinking Messiah should be. So he sends his disciples a message to go out to Jesus. Are you he who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Are you he who is to come, or should we expect somebody else. You see, by John's measuring stick, Jesus didn't measure up. And I think the same is true for you and me. This message today may not be what you expect. If you came thinking you were going to get a warm, fuzzy message before Christmas, that's not the case. Because the Baptist's words are hard words and difficult words, but they're good words and good questions for difficult lives that we lead. Are you he who is to come, or should we expect 
someone else. What is your expectation of Jesus as Messiah in your life? You know, when we ask questions, we need to be prepared for the answers. And there was a pastor who once asked a question and he didn't like the answer he got. He saw a man stand up right in the middle of his message and walk out of the building. And he thought he had said something to offend the man. So he talked to his wife after the service. He said, what did I say to offend him? And she says, oh, don't worry about him, pastor. He always walks in his sleep. He always walks in his sleep. Not the answer that he wanted. Not the answer he wanted at all. But you know, this question that is asked by the Baptist is one we need to ask too. Is Jesus for you simply the little baby Jesus asleep on the hay that we all fawn on during this Christmas season? Is that Jesus for you? Maybe it is. And maybe you need that comforting Jesus in your life. Maybe you're struggling right now and you need that, that image of that baby, that image of innocence. Maybe that's what you need, but maybe you need a different Jesus in your life. Maybe not just Jesus of Bethlehem. Maybe you need Jesus of Nazareth who grew up to die on a cross for you and me. Maybe you need the Messiah who confronts you in your life. Maybe there's something that's been bothering you for a long time in your life and you finally need to come clean with it and come honest with it in your life and you need to give that burden over to Jesus in your life, or maybe it's a burden you've given over to him and you keep pulling back and you keep thinking it's something you can do to control what's going on in your life. Maybe you need the Jesus who will not just come and comfort you, but the one who will give you a kick in the pants, the one who will push you, pull you, prod you in life because you're feeling sorry for yourself. And even though you may have problems in your life, you fail to see that we live in the richest nation on the face of the earth. We have food and medical care, and we have shelter and clothing beyond abundance what 80% of the world has. And maybe that's the Jesus that you need to put your problems in perspective. Maybe you need the Jesus who will come and challenge you with an intractable problem that is present in your family, in your life. You don't see any way out right now. You just see dead ends and roadblocks, and you need to give that to him. Maybe that is the type of Jesus you need. Whom do we expect Jesus to be? Christmas is two weeks from today. Christmas is two weeks from this very day. And the question for you is this, if you're just going to put the Messiah for you in a, a, a box, a shelter, if you're gonna make him to be what you want him to be, then you might as well unpack your bags now and not walk the rest of the way to Bethlehem because it's not gonna be worth it. If that's Jesus to you, just the Jesus you've always known, but if you're open to a different type of Jesus, a new Jesus, as John the Baptist was, then maybe, just maybe, you will find meaning this Advent and Christmas season. You see, when Jesus responded to John, this is what he said, you go tell John this, the blind see, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Jesus didn't respond to John's questions with this long theological dissertation about the validity of the virgin birth or the validity of the resurrection. He said, see what I am doing. See what I am am doing. And that's what we need to see as well. What is Jesus doing in your life? And sadly, what we do, and you and I have done it many times, is we have the expectation of Jesus to do what he's always done. What he's always done in the past, the same old, same old. We have the Jesus that agrees with us. He agrees with our pride, our prejudices, our politics, and he just agrees with us on everything because after all, we know better. But you see, the challenge of Advent, the challenge of John the Baptist is he's not the one we expect. He certainly wasn't for John. Jesus wasn't there to overthrow Rome. He wasn't there to look to Rome for solutions in life. He was there for something different. And the same is true for you and me. If only we allow that in our life, these next two weeks will be a frenzy for all of us. On top of just all of the things that go on the Christmas season, maybe there's other stuff going on in your life right now that you're really challenged by. Will you allow Jesus to carry that? Whom do you expect in your life? 
A number of years ago in England, there was a woman named Cicely Saunders who had trained to be a nurse and a social worker, and then she went to medical school and became a doctor. But she was greatly disturbed many years ago about what was going on in England because when someone was given a diagnosis of terminal illness or death, they were told they had cancer and there was nothing they could do or some other disease, the doctors simply wrote that off as a medical failure and they said, that's it, we're done with you and sorry, we can't do any more. And this greatly, greatly bothered Dr. Saunders that people were not seen as human beings anymore, that they were just written off. So she began to pray because she was a Christian and she began to have a vision of a place where people could go to live with dignity. But she was afraid to act on that dream for seven years. She was afraid to act until finally one day she read Psalm 37 verse 5, which says, when you pray to the Lord, he will bless your ways and bless your paths, not always in the way that you expect, but he will bless your way. And so Dr. Saunders began to experiment with pain control. And Dr. Saunders was the first person to put into a building named St. Christopher's the word hospice. She invented palliative care. She invented the concept of a hospice where people who were dying could receive art therapy and they could go and see plays and they could get their hair done and they could live their final days with dignity because Dr. Saunders believed in her Messiah. She believed that every child of God was a person of worth. And she understood that her Jesus was not the Jesus of her former life, but the Jesus that she claimed the dream that she had to be. You see, the question is, whom do we expect? Who do we expect in life? There's been a new word added to the dictionary this year officially. In the last three years, that word is permacrisis, from pandemic to inflation to a war in Ukraine. The word is permanent crisis, perma crisis. But the great good news of today, as we light this third candle of Advent, is we have permanent good news. We have perma good news because Jesus has come. And the question for you and me is, who do you want Jesus to be in your life? These are hard questions. These are difficult questions, but life is hard. Life is not easy. And there's questions that have to be answered. Who is Jesus for you and whom do you expect? If your answer is the same old, same old, then unpack your bags now because it's not worth taking the journey to Bethlehem anymore. But if your answer is that indeed Jesus is not only acknowledged as the Savior in your life, but he is the Lord of your life every day, then continue your journey. And as we gather for worship and as we go out and live our lives in the world and as we deal with all the things we have to deal with, the question of the ages remains. John's words ring through history. Are you he whom we are to expect? Or should we look for someone else? And only you can answer that. Amen. We worship this morning with our morning offering. Our ushers will receive our offering at this time, and we will also share in a musical offering as we meditate on Jesus the Messiah.
Come, Holy Spirit, fill us once again when the reservoirs of our souls are dry. When we're all dried up, come fill us once again with your Holy Spirit. 
Help us to know and understand you always walk with us and you are the Messiah that defies our expectations. Lord, we ask that in these days of Advent that you would grant us grace, that we not put you into our boxes of expectations of who we think you should be, but rather we allow you to rule as the Lord of our lives. And as we do that, we can see we're often short-sighted. We often, like John the Baptist, mistake what you do in our lives for so many different things. Help us to truly be open to the ways in which you guide and lead us. Almighty God, as we gather this day, be with our church. In this busy season, as all of our different ministries are going at full throttle, we are grateful. Grateful for our journey through Bethlehem. Grateful for our angel tree ministry yesterday that delivered so many gifts to so many for tomorrow evening and our blue Christmas to reach out to those who are grieving and also next weekend to bless our Christmas cantata and all of our times of worship as we gather midweek on Wednesday for Advent and so much more. God, as we gather, help us to not just put you in the place that we think you should be, but truly to reign as Messiah and Lord in our lives. God, as we gather today, be with those who are sick and suffering and shut in, those who are in hospice care, those who are anticipating surgery, and those who are recuperating at home. Along with our concerns, Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise you for joy for the birth of Kinsley Grace Kilburn, daughter of Doug and Emily, and we give you thanks for new life in this season, in this season of new life. We give you thanks for joy with the latest member of La Casa de Cristo. God, as we gather this day, we are grateful for so many things. And we come before you as broken people, not as we should, but only as we are able. And we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass. Before we ask you to stand as you're able for our closing benediction and song, just a couple things. A reminder, we do have our last session of Journey Through Bethlehem this afternoon from 3 to 5. Uh, You can gather right here in the gathering place and uh, begin your journey there if you haven't yet. And come on down, even if you don't have a reservation, uh, we'll squeeze you in and and make it special for you. Also, we want to remind you, this is the last time we'll worship here in the gathering place for a number of weeks. Because next weekend, we'll be in the sanctuary for all of our services. So come hear our Christmas cantata at 1030 or whatever service you can make next weekend. And then the following Sunday is Christmas uh, Day worship. That's one service in the sanctuary at 10 a.m. with Holy Communion. And then the following Sunday is New Year's Day, and that's January 1st. And we'll have one worship service that Sunday also in the sanctuary. So we won't be back here for worship till the second weekend in January. But come and enjoy all the forms of worship we have here and make the season special for you and yours. And now please stand as you're able as we receive the benediction that Aaron shared so many years ago. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord smile upon us and look upon us with his favor. May the Lord give us his peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing loudly and boldly to the Lord.
come let us adore him oh come let us adore him christ the lord god bless you have a wonderful week